Dr. Shaw, as always, thank you. Based on these numbers, some areas haven't peaked, others have. When does Omicron get better? Yeah, great uh, question, Shep, and thanks for having me back. Um, the way I'm looking at this right now, about 800,000 infections a day, um, I expect that number to climb uh, nationally. But as you reported, New York, Massachusetts, New Jersey, Florida probably mm. uh, has peaked, and those numbers are going to start climbing down. And in the next week or two, we're going to start seeing other places peak and come down. So certainly by the time we get into the end of January, first week of February, I expect cases to be coming down. The one challenge is hospitalizations, which always lag. And there, I think we'll probably have to wait another week or two before we see hospitalizations really take a, a substantial decline. Looking forward to that. You know, Dr. Fauci spoke virtually at a World Economic Forum event today. He said it's too soon to predict whether the Omicron variant will spell the end of the pandemic itself. Do you agree? Yeah, I, I do, but I, I guess I would look at it a little bit differently. I mean, will there be future variants? Sure, almost surely there will be. The point is, I think I'm hoping Omicron gives us the lessons we need to manage the rest of this pandemic, however long it lasts, and move to a new normal uh, where we treat this virus much more as an endemic thing. And so I'm hoping that this really is the transition variant that gets us into a different footing for future variants and lets us manage them much more effectively. You know, Doc, the, the restrictions are still in place to reenter the U.S., including a requirement for a recent negative test. Are, are restrictions like that one unnecessary, considering it's everywhere in the country already? Yeah, it's a great question, right? If, you're, if you've got, I mean, 800,000 infections happening a day, does it really make sense to try to keep it out by travelers? I, what I, look, I think it's reasonable to do certain things, like a vaccine requirement that says we don't necessarily need a lot more unvaccinated people, people bringing in more virus. I think that's, that's fine. But I think these kind of general testing schemes that a lot of countries are using, they're not going to, I think, be effective for the long run uh, because there's so much spread across the world. What, Dr. Jha, are we not doing that we should be doing? Because we, we clearly, <laughs> we're a mess. We're the biggest mess in the world from this virus. Yeah, well, there are two things that are going on, Shep. I mean, one is a sheer amount of misinformation. And really, th that is what's killing us. I mean, we still have a large chunk of the country that's not vaccinated, uh, not boosted. That's who's filling up the hospital. So the mess in the hospitals is driven almost completely by unvaccinated or high-risk people who are not boosted. Um, we, and I think the administration, didn't do enough on having enough testing available. Um, we still fight over masks and crowded indoor spaces. Like, there are some basic, simple things that we can do to get through the surge, get back to our lives. And we fight about every single one of them, even places where the data and the evidence is really quite clear. Yeah, I mean, we've known for weeks, even months, and a KN95 or an N95 is what you need because the, the, the cloth mask doesn't do anything. And yet that simple message can't even come from our leaders. It, it, I, it's baffling, mind boggling. Yeah, you know, look, we have we have really good uh, scientists working for the government, great uh, agencies. Those agencies were developed and really built for a different time. They were built for peacetime, uh, where they're slow and deliberate and take time to develop um, guidance. That just doesn't work in the middle of a fast-moving pandemic. So there's no question in my mind that even when the evidence has been clear that higher quality masks matter, uh, our agencies have just not been able to get around to, to delivering that message effectively. Do we need to rethink the agencies, especially, as you put it, in times of emergency, which clearly this is? Yeah, you know, one of the simple kind of but wrong uh, kind of theories is, is, well, these agencies have just gotten politicized. I think that's the wrong way to look at it. Um, again, I know the scientists in these places, they are terrific. They're the best in the country. But the agencies are not designed to handle a crisis like this. So uh, as we pull out of this pandemic, we absolutely have to look at the U.S. government, state agencies, and ask, how do we build better institutions to manage a crisis like this? We, we've had crises prior where the head of the CDC is out there every couple of days and having a sort of measured, constant, update sort of situation for the American public. Through two administrations here, we've not had that this time. I mean, does there need to be a messenger in chief who's missing? Well, what I would say is Dr. Walensky, who's the head of the CDC, in my mind, is not only a brilliant scientist, but I think 
Uh, she's done a, you know, she's got a very difficult job to do, but I think she should be out there more. So if I were giving advice to the administration, and no one's asking me, but I'll give free <laughs> advice anyway, which is I would say get Dr. Walensky out there every day, uh, every other day, as you suggested, uh, talking to the media, talking to people and saying what she thinks and uh, explaining to people what we need to be doing right now. I think that would be enormously helpful. Uh, she's really a, a terrific director, I think, of the CDC, but we need to hear more from her. Dr. Shish Jha, great to see you. Thank you.